What's up, guys? Greetings. So I know a lot of you were interested in seeing how my left click legend kind of turned out towards the end, and unfortunately, I didn't really get to capture a lot of it at the end of the beta. So, with this one opened up, got the character back opened up. Uh, I feel like I've got the best in slot items now all broken down the way I wanted to originally. So, I'm gonna go through it really quickly, not waste any time. Let's get right into it. Alright, so let's pull open the skill tree. We'll break it down piece by piece here, all the way from the start to the end. So, the very first section of the tree in your basic seals, we're going with the lunging strike. Enhanced lunging strike gives you extra 30% increased damage and heals you, plus 2% of your maximum life when you hit a healthy enemy. That's not a huge extra bonus, but it helps. This is the main thing that we're looking for out of here, is the combat lunging strike with critical strikes with lunging strike granting you berserking for 1.5 seconds. So you're getting a guaranteed boost to your berserking every time you land a critical and you're going to be doing a lot of lunging strikes so that berserking is going to stay up for a large amount of uptime and that's a very big part of what makes the left click build possible and even kind of powerful. A lot of people do prefer to go down the flay even if they're not specifically building as much as they can into bleed. Flay is a great skill, it does do a lot of bleed damage but I think a large part of this build that I'm doing that maybe a lot of the other builds don't really um, consider is that I'm not trying to get the build that's gonna 100 to 0 a boss by itself in the lowest amount of time. It's a build that you're gonna be able to do it by yourself, solo, no problem. Might take you 10 seconds longer, 15 seconds longer, but we're focusing on how does the combat feel with this build. And when you're using the lunging strike and flying around all over the place and use the hammer of ancients instead of upheaval or the whirlwind skill, uh, it's a very quick to activate skill. It doesn't make you feel like you're locked into animations. It does more of a 360 of damage than a straightforward like the Whirlwind. Um, but it's really quick and high damage and bursts more like the upheaval. So it's, it's right in the middle of these two and it feels really good to use these two skills in combination. It's really tactile, it's really satisfying. That's why I, I like this build the most. So after we max out our first Lunging Strike tab, down into the core skills, our one core skill, again, the Hammer of Ancients, maxed out into Enhanced Hammer of Ancients, gives you a little bit of extra Fury generation, and finally into the Furious Hammer of Ancients, which is going to let you do significantly more damage when you lay that hammer down, based on keeping your Fury Bar full, and a lot of the things in this build are going to keep that Fury Bar basically 100% at all times. So every time you lay down that hammer, you're going to be doing a lot of damage with it, and you're going to be able to combine that with a bunch of other legendary aspects that are going to make that even more powerful. Then after we've got these two skills, that's it. We're not going for any more skills in this build at all until we get to the end for our ultimate. Uh, I do happen to have uh, an item that's given me level 1 into the ground stomp, a little bit of a nice bonus to have. Not necessary at all. None of the other skills are necessary at all for this. We're going into all of our little side bonuses here. They're going to make this build quite a bit stronger. So in the defensive tab, we're putting one point into Outburst and two points into the Tough as Nails perk after that one. We're not specking very much into Thorns at all for this build, but we are going to get a lot of the benefits of a fully specced Thorns build just by having a couple points into this. So even up near the level 30 mobs, they're still just one tapping themselves. You walk right through everything and they just destroy themselves. You're not getting it up to the point where the bosses and the elites are going to be doing massive damage to themselves like a fully specced thorns build will, uh, but you're also not giving up all of your combat abilities to get that and it's just a lot more fun to play this way with having a little bit of that on the side I think. Then if you go down to the brawling skills, skip the whole thing, get right past that. Into the Weapon Mastery tab is where a lot of uh, a lot of our points are going in here. So we've got one point into the Pit Fighter. It's going to give you the extra 3% damage to close enemies, and you're always going to be doing damage to close enemies. Uh, and then the extra 8% against injured enemies. I got this to help against the actual dungeon bosses themselves when you're soloing, because when you hit them with your ult, you're usually not going to get them down much lower than maybe 50% of their health. And once they get to 35% of their health, you're going to get that extra little bit of damage bonus, so while everything's on cooldown, kind of helps clean up the boss a little bit quicker, shave some time off of that. And then into Thick Skin, one point, 
This is going to keep your fortify up quite a bit on its own, but we have other items that are going to contribute to that as well. So on top of Fury pretty much always being full, you're going to end up having Fortify being pretty much always full. And then down to the next line into the counter offensive, this is the main benefit of keeping that Fortify full, is while you have Fortify over 50% of your maximum life, you'll deal 15% increased damage, plus you get the extra 10% reduced damage for being Fortified at all. So that's going to add quite a significant amount of damage to your launching strike as you're kind of just flying through everything and periodically dropping your hammers. And then of course finally down into the ultimates. I don't think it's been a question at all between any of the builds. Hall of the Ancients just seems to be the best ultimate for the Barbarian period no matter what you're trying to do so same case here. Now if we go over to the item side of things I didn't quite get uh, everything that I wanted stacked on at the end of the last beta. But I'm pretty confidently feeling like this is uh, the best in slot A fixes that I want to have for my build. There are the you know the numbers that are associated with it that can get higher or lower rolls. So I'm sure a lot of these items have higher rolls that you can get to them. But the actual aspects themselves are all lined up quite well for this build. So we'll go through them one by one and talk about what they're actually affecting. So uh, each point of fury generated, well the maximum fury grants 2.2 fortify part of the build keeping you up at maximum fortify so you can have the extra 15% damage on all of your attacks. Lucky hit up to a 35% chance to gain 125 fortify whenever you deal direct damage while berserking. Lucky hit up to a 35% chance to gain 125 fortify whenever you deal direct damage while berserking and almost all of your damage will be while berserking since you're spamming out left clicks like crazy you'll get a lot of criticals so you'll always be berserking pretty much while you're doing your lunging strikes. And another thing to consider about that lucky hit is it starts at a 35%, but it's not just the aspects of these items, it's the affixes as well. So uh, if we go down to the gloves here, plus 7.8% lucky hit chance. And there's a lot of other items that I have on here that contribute to that as well. So while it says 35%, with all of the other aspects, uh, sorry, affixes combined from the other items, it's a very significant chance that I'm always going to have that plus 125 coming up. Uh, but also the Hammer of the Ancients, it's the only item I've seen so far that directly affects this skill. Quakes outward, dealing 42% of its damage to enemies. That's extending the, uh, the damage range from a little cone in front of you like this to a full 360 and a wider range of damage. So when you drop that hammer and it's all charged up, and you're doing a lot of damage to the enemies in front, most of the stuff that's all around you is also just going to completely melt. You gain 0.5% increased armor for 4 seconds when you deal any form of damage, stacking up to 50%. And this is a very nice item to have in combination with the thorns, because that all counts as you de dealing damage to the enemies. So w when you're in combat, this is going to be up to 50% at all times. So my armor here will be up at like 3300 while I'm in the middle of combat instead of 2200. And that's a significant bonus to be getting off of one item. Lucky hit, again another one that's determined by that lucky hit. When you hit a crown controlled enemy, there's going to be a 50% chance for that crowd control effect to spread to another unaffected enemy. And that's going to be a lot higher than 50% again with all of the other affixes that are going to contribute to that. It also has got a little bit of movement speed in there. It's not the only one. There's a few items that I've got with movement speed on here. Another 8.4% out of there. Uh, it just adds to the kind of fluid feeling of running around and being able to quickly jump from enemy to enemy and quickly kill stuff. Attacking enemies with a basic skill increases the damage of your next core skill cast by 20% up to 50%. Uh, I've seen a lot of other items that have this that have a quite a bit lower number than 9% up to 50%. So this one's a pretty nice one as far as I can tell. So for this I only need to use my left click three times and then it's fully charged for the extra 50% damage on the hammer. And that completely lines up with using your hammer and the amount of fury that it takes to use it and the amount of left clicks that it takes to regenerate to get it back at 100% to get that bonus as well. So those stack perfectly on top of each other. I don't have to do any extra le left clicks than I would already be doing to get my fury generated for the 100% bonus. It's also got a couple really nice affixes on there for the overpower damage. 
overpower isn't something that you have a super great ability to control how often it's going to proc. It's by default just a base 3%. There are skills and items that you can uh, attribute to that to make it more common or even guaranteed, but it's not a part of this build. But when it does happen, that alone is an extra 37% damage to the overpower. So when that does land, it makes it hit quite a bit harder as well. All those little A fixes worth con worth thinking about when you're comparing your items. Each point of fury you generate will at maximum fury, grants your next core skill 3% increased damage up to 90%. So this is the one that doesn't line up quite as perfectly with the fury generation as the others. It does take a couple extra left clicks to get it to the full 90%. And I think the 3% bonus is uh, a fairly low number, fairly low roll for this particular aspect. But it's just another thing that's contributing, this this category of aspect is going to be contributing to that hammer drop when you put it down. Another thing to stack on, so we're up into the multiple hundred percent damage when we drop that hammer now. Plus it has the chance to crit, so it, it's no upheaval. It's not going to be like the crazy upheaval overpower builds that I've seen doing 20, 30k in a hit. But those are very, very low chance hits as well. This is going to be consistently doing 5, 6, 7k on a good hit you have 19% increased chance to strike against injured enemies. While you are healthy, you gain 38% increased crowd control duration. I find those kind of end up proccing in opposing scenarios. So the 19% increased critical strike chance against injured enemies ends up helping a lot more against the elites and the dungeon bosses where you know you have more than one or two seconds where they're actually at that injured state. And then while you are healthy, is something you're gonna almost always be while you're dealing with the large area mobs. So that extra 38% crowd control is uh, it's gonna be proccing pretty much 100% of the time. And if you look at the affixes on these as well, I was lucky enough to get um, basic skill damage as an affix proc on both of these. So both of my basic damaging skills are gonna be getting the extra basic damage bonus from the weapons. And then if you can, uh, and you, you've got the slots open for it, Stack as many of these topazes as you can on your on your weapons. Uh, if I had, you know, all the items I need to be able to add a bunch of sockets to these and I could be double stacking topazes on all my weapons, that is a hell of a lot of extra room that you've got for the extra basic skill damage bonuses from the topazes. So while it works well here and it looks good here, there's a large amount of extra damage that could be added to all of my basic left click attacks still. So it's good to know that even with where we're at here, where we're feeling a little bit overpowered just in beta and everything being 25, there's still a lot of room before we're getting even close to the ceiling. And onto the rings, distant enemies have a 15% chance to be stunned for 2 seconds when they hit you. You deal 32% increased damage to stunned enemies. And that is definitely a smaller bonus by comparison to Basically all the other items, I think this is the least contributing one to this build in particular. But it helps, that little extra 15% proc, it does what it does, it's nice to have. Uh, I'm also looking out for the A fixes on these, so I'm happy with all of the A fixes on this ring. So it's another reason why I slot that one in instead of any other random ring. The extra physical damage, base physical damage, plus critical strike chance, damage, damage, it's all good things to have. Second ring, skills deal up to 24% increased damage based on your available primary resource. Which is just an aspect version of the skill that we already have, which is when we have it at 100% fury, we're going to do that extra 24% damage. And 24%, again, this is a low roll. I've seen quite a bit higher on that number. So the extra 24% definitely helps with my build, but I'm looking to get that same aspect with a higher roll on it which will help quite a bit more. Finally down to the last item, our second two-handed weapon. Uh, Thorn's damage dealt has an 80% chance to damage all enemies around you. I think this aspect is probably one of the best aspects for the Barbarian class as a whole, no matter what build you're using. If you're using the actual Thorn's build, this is 100% a necessary item. It makes or breaks the whole build, but even with how I'm building, just having a little bit of extra thorns on the points and having uh, on this one you got plus 50 thorns as an aspect. You could be putting emeralds into all of your slots to be uh, adding extra thorns damage as well. So there's ways that you can make that a very big contributing factor to your build without having to spec or really build in the thorns. That's what I'm doing here and 
the damage that it grants to large AoE mob situations is significant. This item alone is the reason why I can just walk into a group of enemies and they all just kill themselves immediately, except for the elites. Unfortunately for us, we've got a lot left to be desired in terms of our uh, expertise tab, being able to use techniques. Unfortunately, that's not really a thing for us yet. Uh, but for now, based on what we do have, I feel like this is kind of just the most fun build. I think it's very comparable to the damage of what's being shown as the most powerful builds being thrown around so far. Um, but I think, just in general, a lot more fun to play, a lot more fun to go around and clear dungeons in. It feels a lot more satisfying and tactile to go into combat and kill stuff. And for me, that's really what I'm looking for out of this. I'm not looking to uh, set a world record on, you know, shaving one second off of a boss time. I'm looking to have the other 99% of my gameplay feel really fun, and tactile, and satisfying. So, you know, hope you guys uh, get the same kind of experience out of this. Take care. Have a good one. Impressive.